This is the guidance film for the final GCSE history paper, The Transformation of Surgery. This is the source-based exam. This is the general guidance for each of the questions that you will be presented with. Question one then. This is the inference question. You will be presented with a source. What you will have to do is demonstrate both the skills of comprehension and inference. This should take you no more than five minutes. Read the question. What can you learn from source A about? Now, whatever comes after the word about is the specific task that you have to complete. So whatever you can comprehend must be about what is written here. Whatever you can infer must be about what is written here. What can you learn about source A about whatever? I can comprehend this. Because. And link the because back to this. What can you infer about source A? I can infer about because. Without the word because, you aren't substantiating your comprehension or substantiating your inference. Once again, no more than five minutes. Question two. The portrayal question. What impression of... And there will follow the specific task. No more than 10 minutes. This is an awkward question, and therefore we suggest the following route through. Here you need to use details from the source to explain what the source is showing. Essentially a comprehension task. Why the scene it's representing is important. And finally, the message or impression the source is designed to show. You work your way through these three specific tasks. Question three. How far do sources B, C and D suggest? How far do three sources suggest whatever the task is that comes next? No more than 15 minutes. When you do this, you must provide a balanced response. The task specifically says you must refer to three sources. Therefore, in your response, you must respond to each of the three sources. Failure to deal with each of the three will reduce your access to the higher marks. Your response must also be balanced in the sense that you must tell me how the sources both agree and disagree with the idea or statement that follows the word suggest. This is a classic example of the discipline of history. The question tells us very clearly that we must deal with why the sources do and the sources don't support and agree with the statement that's provided. You must then provide a conclusion to complete this particular question. Question four. This is the utility question, the usefulness question. Which of the sources, suggestion here is two of the sources, is more useful to the historian? Ten marks, fifteen minutes. Once again, it is the discipline of the historian being tested here. For both of the sources, you need to tell me which, why each source is both useful and not useful. Now ideally you will provide more than one example of each. So for example there are two reasons why D is useful, there are two reasons why D is not useful. Two for E and two reasons why E is not useful to the historian. Think about what both sources can and cannot tell you. Think about where both sources are from, which might be the more reliable, balanced and therefore the best. You must address these points for both sources and then give your overall opinion on the best source in a conclusion. Utility can only be reached when you have judged the strengths and the weaknesses of a source. Finally, question five. 
reaching the judgment and using the sources and your own knowledge. Now the body of knowledge for this particular exam is very small because the first four questions are all dealing with your interpretation and challenge of particular tasks with the sources that are provided. At no point up until this point has your own knowledge been required. This is the 16 mark question and as you know from the previous exams you will require 25 minutes to be able to answer this proper, properly. It will be pitched in the terms of how far do you agree with the statement. You are asked to refer to the sources and your own knowledge. So when referring to source A, make sure you say source A. When you're using your own knowledge, please make sure you make it clear that you are using your own knowledge. You must provide a balanced response, both agreeing and disagreeing with the statement. You must then come to a conclusion. Now it's possible that you may already know the answer before you start. Feel free to commit yourself to that opinion in your introduction, but then do not contradict yourself. If you are unsure, write your response and draw your conclusion at the end. But the question is specifically, how far do you agree? Therefore, in your conclusion, you must address the question by saying, how far you agree. Examples down here, you agree totally, you agree a lot but not completely, you don't agree very much, but you must reach a conclusion. Question five is very similar to the last question that you've done on your previous two papers. It will be written in a style that requires a two-sided response, but you must make it clear that you are using each of the sources and you must provide your own knowledge, and you make it clear to the examiner when you're doing that. Failure to use your own knowledge won't be marked. Failure to use all the sources will hold your mark back. Now, in much the same way, if you've used your own knowledge on any of the previous questions, it will not be marked. It has no value, because you've not been asked to use your own knowledge on any other question other than question five. Thank you.